behaving differently from your group can make you an outcast. But what would you do if you knew your group was entirely wrong? Would you, for example, sit in a burning room just because everyone else does? This hotel conference suite has been prepared for a focus group discussion on internet shopping. But all is not as it seems. The place is rigged with four hidden cameras and six concealed microphones. And psychology professor Dominic Abrams is watching from our control room, which we've built in an adjoining suite. Now it's just a question of sitting and waiting. Right, so this is a questionnaire all about kind of shopping habits and everything here. So I'll just move that off your chair. So you our first participant is Mary Mizuno, a London student who thinks she's arrived early. What she doesn't know is that behind this door, there's about to be a serious fire in the hotel kitchen, or at least the illusion of one created by a smoke machine and some sound effects. What will she do? Oh, she's now noticed the smoke and is concerned. At this point, she decides to investigate to find out what's going on. She's immediately taken responsibility for figuring out what to do. Mary does the sensible thing and evacuates quickly. She even leaves her bag and coat. But Mary was on her own. This time, we've planted seven actors who are all in on the experiment. We've said to them, when you see the smoke, do nothing. Our second participant is Lauren Heffernan, also a student. What will she do? In this situation, she'll be following a script. The script is partly written in her mind. It's a script which is borrowed from things like sitting exams. Most situations like this have some element of expected or scripted behavior. But what will happen to her script when we make a slightly unusual situation very unusual? Nothing to start with, so we get her attention. Now, how long before she dashes out of the room? checking increasingly to see what the other people are thinking. But who can she appeal to? The answer is nobody. She turns to the norm of the group, ignore the smoke. In a real fire, the people in this group would be in very serious danger by now. I was looking for some sort of reaction from someone else, even just the slightest little thing, that they'd recognize that there was something, you know, going on here. For me to kind of react on that, and then do something about it. I kind of needed prodding. <coughs> She's waiting for someone else to react. Why isn't anyone else reacting? She feels uncomfortable. She doesn't want to embarrass herself by taking the lead, taking action. But something is definitely wrong. Lauren stayed in the room for 20 minutes after spotting the smoke, concerned but immobile. The fire brigade say that if this fire had been real, even if flames hadn't burnt through the door, she would have died of asphyxiation in this time. In the end, we had to ask her to leave. What about him? Thanks. I was surprised that I didn't do anything at all. I was just literally waiting. I just thought that someone else is surely going to say something soon. And because no one else did, I just didn't react at all. We tried the experiment ten times, and the same thing happened over and over again. If the person was on their own, they left quickly. If they were in a group of three or more, they stayed, rooted to the spot. The average length of time they stayed, 13 minutes. <laughs>